Okay, so now we know what the exponential form of the complex number is. We know what the mass theorem is. So we can move forward and try to calculate the complex number, uh, the square root of a complex number using uh, the exponential form. So I have a complex number here, z equals to 4e is to power i pi by 3. So if I write this down, uh, Sorry, let's begin like this. If I have to find the square root of this uh, of this complex number, so this means that r cos theta plus i sine theta, and this whole thing is being squared. And this is equals to 9 cos pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3. Now based on what we learned from the mass theorem, um, I did a video on it in the uh, which I posted before this video. So this means that r squared equals to 4 hang on a second this is not this is actually 4 yeah so this means that r of the square root is 2 and this means that 2 theta equals to pi by 3 but I'll also add a factor 2 k pi now for the complex for the square root of a complex number this means that from this number uh, from one complex number I'll get two uh, I'll get two numbers the two square roots right so the first one will be where k equals to zero this means that without any revolution of uh, uh, the complex number so this means that the argument of the first one will be two pi two theta equals to pi by three and theta equals to pi by 6 so one complex so one root will be 2e i pi by 6 and now the other root where k equals to 1 so this would be 2 theta equals to pi by 3 plus 2 pi resulting in 7 pi by 3 right so theta would be 7 pi by 6 now principal argument lies between minus pi to plus pi so this could be written as minus 5 pi by 6 so your other root is going to be 2 e to power minus 5 pi by 6 so this is how you calculate the square root of a number using uh, uh, the exponential form and a bit of a Demas theorem. Now, if you had to find the cube root now, you, all you had to do was set k equals to 2 and find the third argument. Say if I did uh, k equals to 2. So this would have meant that 3 theta equals to pi by 3 plus 4 pi because it's a cube root this means that um, the initial a complex number was a cube which means that r cube equals to 4 in this case However, if you were to extend uh, this for the same example if you did k equals to 2 for the square root this would have meant that 
2 pi equals to thirteen upon three by and theta would have been thirteen pi upon six. And if you turn into the principal argument, you would have had to subtract um four pi from it. I'm sorry, not 4 pi, uh, just 2 pi from it because you're subtracting one, uh, one entire revolution. And this would have given you pi by 6. So this means for a square root, um, after k equals to 1, you get to the same level. You, you again get, uh, get the same root. So this means that it gets redundant. That's why we only take the values of k equals to 0 and k equals to 1. If you were to take k equals to 3, you would have um, ended up over here again after you converted your argument argument into uh, the principal argument. If you were to find the cube root, let's say um, this doesn't show, really show up um, in the P3. It's not part of the P3 syllabus to find the cube root of a complex number. But if you had to find, say, the cube root of a complex number, all you had to do was uh, set the complex number e uh, equals to... Um, Sorry, uh, set the com yeah, set the complex number equals to z cube, where this region. Let me use a different color for this. Yeah, where this region would have been cube, and everything would have changed. It would have been r cube equals to uh, four, and it's the same thing there on. And then you just take values of k equals to zero, one, two for um, to find the arguments of the three uh, cube roots. And this is pretty much the same stuff, but that doesn't sh show up in the P3 syllabus. So this is it for finding the square root of the complex number. I hope you guys understood what I tried to explain.